Hey everybody, it's Greg Piper with Guardian RFID. You know, in my years of correctional experience, I've seen some very, very remarkable staff do some really stupid things. So what I want to take just a minute and talk to you about is four common mistakes corrections officers make while performing basic rounds. The first and most common mistake is not actually looking and making visual contact with the offender. That's a very easy fix in this case. It seems simple, but the idea is, once you've scanned the tag, actually turn, look, make visual contact. You're looking for two things from the offender. One, you're looking for position and you're looking for movement. Make sure you see that sign of life. Make sure you ensure that that inmate is alive. And you do that again by looking at them. Nobody else can verify that you're looking at the offender but you. So make sure you turn, make a visual contact with the offender during your rounds. The second most common mistake is thinking every round is a race at Talladega. The key is to slow down, take some time. We go too fast when we do rounds sometimes. It's not a race. We can see by the logging of each tag on the compliance monitor just how fast the officers do the rounds. Slow down, take some time, pause in between to ensure again you make visual contact, you're noticing your surroundings and not compromising your safety or the safety of others around you by going too fast and assuming that everything's being caught visually. We're going to be late on rounds, that's just a fact. Things happen inside the jail or prison. It's how you articulate those things that really matters. We have to explain what's happened and why we're late. Whether it be a, an offender has a seizure, a broken water pipe, a leaky faucet, maybe just somebody has stopped and asked you a question that took a little longer than you expected. Whatever it is, articulate the reasons that we're late, why your rounds may be behind schedule, and note those. Using the cell check feature, you can use a manual entry and note the reason for our late checks and then move on. And then do your best next time to start a little sooner and anticipate the fact that we might be stopped along the way. It's all about anticipation and preparing for what's coming, but also knowing that when things do hit the fan, you're ready and you can articulate those differences. Another common problem is allowing outside forces to distract you from not getting your rounds done in a timely fashion. The number one priority we have is the safety and the security of ourselves, our coworkers, volunteers, and the offenders. And the rounds are the number one thing we have to do. You know, for years, my two catchphrases were one, get your team home safe, make sure everybody on your shift, on your team, gets out the doors at the end of their shift. And the second thing is get your rounds done. Get your rounds done, get your rounds done. Oh, and by the way, while you're doing that, get your rounds done. Yes, getting our rounds done may seem monotonous, it may seem boring, but it's critical for the success of your facility. So when distractions happen during our rounds, we have to communicate that to the volunteers and the other people on the team. If the medical staff has interrupted you and told you that they need to see somebody, let them know you're gonna get those offenders to them once your round is completed. If you get a phone call from someone on the staff, again, inform them what your priorities are in order to get your rounds done first. Everything else has to take a back seat to ensuring our rounds done on a regular basis. And the key to that is communicating the importance to you and to them of getting your rounds done. Communication is critical in making sure everybody on your team knows your priorities and the priorities of the administration. The fourth mistake that I noticed made by corrections professionals is when they go to look at somebody who's maybe on a more constant observation, maybe a 15 minute check, when they go look at that offender and they don't see a sign of life right away, they kick the door or bang on the door to look for that sign of life. Let me ask you a question. When you go to sleep tonight and you lay down, if I were to stand at the foot of your bed and every 15 minutes I kick the end of your bed to make sure you're alive, after your six or eight hours of sleep, you're gonna be pretty pissed off at me. So ask yourself, is that what you want for the offenders? Now I'm not saying we have to coddle them and I'm not saying we have to let them sleep all the time, but take the time to ensure they're alive. But you can pause, look through the window and wait for that sign of life. Pause eight to 10 to 12 seconds. Look for the chest to rise and fall. Watch them roll over or a foot move. Ensure that there is a sign of life, but you don't always have to do it the most violent and aggressive way possible. We can be a professional by taking the time to let them rest and watch their sign of life through observation, 
without necessarily going right to banging the door. Now, by all means, if you don't see a sign of life after 10, 12, 15 seconds, tap the door, kick the door, call their name, make sure they're alive. That's critical, obviously. We don't want unresponsive inmates. But take the time to also allow them to rest. A rested inmate will be easier for you to manage and it will make everyone's life a little bit easier. Our job is tough. It's not for everybody. Mistakes will happen. But if you take the time to slow down and think about perhaps these four common mistakes that we make while doing rounds, implement some of these changes, see if that doesn't help us take a big bite out of this risk apple that we're dealing with every single day. Our job is to protect the employees, volunteers, ourselves, the inmates that we work with every single day inside these facilities. So take the time, slow down, be a professional. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can contact us at info at guardianrfid.com. Thanks for listening. Get your team home safe.